Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Waller, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the President and Chief Executive Officer of Omicron Delta Kappa. Um, tonight, we welcome uh, four candidates um, to the position of Student Trustee, National Student Vice Chair, and Student Advisory Board Chair-Elect. Um, our four candidates today are Brooke Dominiac, a 2022 initiate of the Furman University Circle, Mitch Murata, a 2023 initiate of Long Island University Post, Alicia Ryan, a 2022 initiate of the University of Baltimore, and Sean Schrader, a 2022 initiate of the University of South Florida. Um, the profiles of all the candidates are can be found on our website, and I'm actually going to put the, um, the, the the a link in the chat so that if folks want to be able to see it, you can. Um, and all of the the candidate information, the resumes, candidate statements, are is all there on that website. So we'll get that up to you. Um, for this session, I recommend for the best experience of the forum to be sure to put it on speaker view in the upper right hand corner so that you'll have a full scre screen of the individual candidate as they are talking. So the format for this e evening is as follows. There'll be four questions um, and everybody gets to answer each, uh, each of the questions. Each candidate will have the opportunity to be the first person to answer a question. And then we will route through each person answering a question. <laughs> Um, after the first four questions, um, Tim, our Vice President for Membership and Operations, and Jamie, our Director of Membership, will help us with the um, uh, can any candidate questions. So can it, er, folks, if you have any questions, please be sure to submit them um, via the chat. Um, and so then Tim and Jamie will be able to, to um, help us with that part. Um, once we begin with the audience participation. And so at this point, let's begin. So as I as I told everyone beforehand, I'm mixing things up um, in my own world of um, always bet getting the question last because of my last name. I'm swapping things up. So we're gonna start with the first question and the order is gonna be Sean, Alicia, Mitch, and Brooke. <laughs> okay, and then the next round, well, I'll we'll go through that as well. So for the first question, please tell us about your ODK involvement and experience and the impact it's had and the impact on your own circle. Now, let me repeat okay. that. Oh. Tell us about your ODK involvement experience and impact on your own circle. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. Waller. And, and good evening, everybody. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight and your interest and leadership with ODK and also all of my fellow candidates for your demonstrated leadership in a number of ways. Uh, I'm fortunate, as it was stated, to be a 2022 initiative at the University of South Florida, where I'm finishing up my master's degree in business administration. And through that experience, I've really been able to understand, I think, the value of community leadership. Uh, when I first was nominated to join ODK, I didn't know a whole lot about the organization, but quick leadership, um, skill building, and understanding how to make an impact um, really were the things that resonated to me in the research I did, and being able to understand the impact that you could make at a local level. And that experience really engaged me to uh, become more involved, I think, at a bigger level. Uh, and I've been afforded the chance to serve as a member of the National Student Advisory Board over the last year and a half, as well as be a speaker uh, at the 2023 National Leadership Conference on Community Leadership. And I think that, again, all of those experiences have showed me that leadership can be defined in a number of ways. And I think more than anything, um, leadership is, is what you make of it. And I think that ODK plays such a special role among many leadership organizations that are out there and being able to provide the tools and skill sets to empower members uh, to really apply their interests to opportunities to serve and give back to the community. And that's what I think um, is so special and so needed today. Thank you. Uh, Alicia. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, I appreciate everyone's time. I'm going to give a brief disclaimer that my cat is very interested in the Zoom. Usually he's not like, so I'm just 
warning people if you see a fluff go across the screen. Um, so I was initiated um, to, you know, the ODK circle in 2022, as um, uh, President Waller said, and I pretty much immediately we had a vacuum of leadership within our organization. Um, and I really appreciate the advisor who kind of came to me and said, well, Alicia, you know, uh, what would you want to run for president? Um, I was a little bit hesitant as I am a mom. Um, I do a lot of extracurricular activities and volunteer work. Um, but I did, I, I took the chance and I ran for president. Um, our organization had pretty much floundered. Um, I wouldn't say it was dead, but it was definitely dying um, when I took the presidency. Um, and over the past three semesters, I have rebuilt it so much so that um, the first initiation I ran, I think we had 20 people in person and we actually had a capper initiation this semester because we were about to go over our space limit. Um, so that has been just a thrilling adventure. Um, I rebuilt my board. Um, I have recruited some just very amazing people because I truly believe that you cannot be a good leader without amazing support around you um, and people who are also willing to step up and do the work. Um, and it has been just, just a thrilling experience. Um, and then, you know, through our ODK circle, we have had some of the highest um, participation events on our campus uh, over the past uh, semester. So that has just really shown that, you know, even though I took a chance and I was a little bit hesitant about doing it, um, that with the right people and the right support and being among just an amazing group of ODK initiates and members that, you know, we can do anything and the impossible is possible. So thank you. Mitch. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank leadership and administration for putting this together. I want to thank all my fellow candidates for uh, appearing here on this platform. And I want to thank all the different members who are coming on and taking part in this uh, in this momentous occasion. Uh, I'm a recent uh, graduate, I think the most recent of everyone on this platform here, 2023, uh, just this past year. What I bring to the table is I'm the non-traditional learner. I um, have been very successful in the world of business for many years, and the pandemic uh, situation that impacted us all is what brought me back into school or actually into school to get the degrees that uh, I now push my children uh, high school age to strive for. When it comes to community, I think I have led the way with one of Long Island, New York's biggest youth track teams uh, known nationwide. And um, as far as my direct involvement with ODK, it was somewhat limited other than being uh, invited to join this prestigious organization, taking part in an outstanding ceremony and building uh, connections that I still hold to this day as I'm currently attending law school. I thank everybody for the opportunity. And Brooke. Awesome. Thank you. I kind of had a feeling I was going to get this one last, but I guess for me, my story is a little bit different. Um, my involvement in my circle was just kind of limited just because of my school size, obviously COVID, and I graduated really early. Um, I wasn't inducted into ODK or I wasn't accepted into it until I was a junior in 2022. So that was the spring semester. And I wasn't actually inducted until like, I think September 30th, 2020 in 2022, which was only I guess, two months before I was graduating since I graduated in January. So I didn't really get to experience all the stuff that my chapter like had or my circle. And that's one of the reasons why I want to give back, I guess, because my main involvement was um, I, I won National Leader of the Year for Communications. And that gave me the experience to travel from San Francisco all the way to Atlanta for that conference. And I honestly had no idea like how big the network is and the opportunities. And I had no idea that none of that was available for me like as a student. And I think that goes a long way. And I think there's a lot of students in all the different circles that feel that way or don't really know how many resources and opportunities are out there. Like, I also had no idea that there's five presidents in ODK, like to me, like that's so cool. And I really think there's a huge potential for ODK to just to be louder and kind of, there's a huge bridge that's missing. And that's really why I guess my involvement, even though I wasn't involved much in my circle, my goal is I really want to help bring all the circle together and make it known for students. So they know those opportunities they have, I guess, on campus, off campus, and then once they're an alumni, I guess, going forward. So kind of a little bit of a different answer, but hoping it can get 
more involved in my circle and then my circle as well at Clemson for my MBA in the future. Thank you all. Okay. So question number two, and we're going to go Mitch, Alicia, Brooke, and Sean. So yeah, kind of Brooke, you kind of teed it up a little bit for us. Um, why are you interested in serving in this role? So Alicia, kick us off. That's fine. I think you said Mitch first, but that's fine. Um, so, um, but I can go ahead. Um, so I um, kind of parroting Brooke. Um, I have a very um, strong feeling of reciprocity. So the organizations that you know have given to me, I really feel like it's important to give back to them. Um, through service of whatever, you know, kinds that they need. Um, so, you know, I serve on the parent association of my daughter's school. Um, I'm on the SGA at the University of Baltimore. Um, and then ODK has just been such an impactful, um, you know, organization for me. I've made so many good friends and lasting relationships um, that I really want to give back to this organization. Um, and then kind of also going off of what Mitch said, I'm also a non-traditional student. Um, I think often our voices are not really heard. I think there's a lot more of us now after the pandemic. Um, and it's really important that, you know, you're getting diversity of thought and, you know, having kind of different perspectives and takes on, you know, what would be best for ODK moving forward and how to create programming that kind of is inclusive of all people. Um, and I would love to see and be a part of that process. Thank you, Mitch. I spent the lifetime giving back to the community. I've been very blessed, uh, worked hard to achieve all of this, but um, when one has blessings, one should share those blessings. I think that um, community and service and involvement is something that has always ticked off with me. And when I first learned of ODK, I, I knew this is another organization, another vehicle in order to, to continue that forward motion, that momentum. Looking at the website and taking in some of the, the, the historic entities who have come through, um, it just justifies what my thought process was and what this organization can be. I think Brooke had mentioned that sometimes there's not enough uh, recognition of what it is and what it can be. And so uh, certainly one of the perspectives I have, and this might lead into another question later on, is how do we increase that message? How do we spread the word? And how do we let people know what a force we really are to be reckoned with? Because just in, just hearing my fellow candidates already, I'm, I'm motivated and I sense there's a, there's a passion here present. And uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled to be part of it. And um, I'm hoping to continue to, to serve in, in a way that, uh, Maybe I don't know it exists yet. Thank you, Brooke. Um, yeah, I guess there's uh, probably three main reasons why I would love to be in this position as student trustee. I guess the first one is like when I was first accepted into ODK, that was a moment that just made me like so happy and proud, I guess. And I finally felt like a bigger purpose in myself. And I felt like ODK was able to see something in me that I really never kind of saw in myself. I was always the girl like, I guess ODK didn't see the girl that had ADHD or a learning disability or the girl who had to kind of work harder than others. They kind of saw a growing leader within me and getting that first recognition was just put a spark in me. And that's kind of the reason why, the, the first reason why I kind of want to serve as a trustee, just because I want to help other students feel that same sense of kind of acceptance, but also like empowerment, just like I did, because that was probably a feeling I'm never going to forget. And then the second reason is I just love what ODK stands for and just their mission, I guess, to identify honor and kind of develop future leaders, but especially honor, like there's so many um, honors and accolades for academics. And I feel like leadership is just so important for just America as a whole and just the world. And that's just something I would love to like just to be a part of and helping shape, I guess, the future of all these young leaders and kind of grow that, whether it's on campus or off campus. And then I guess the, the third reason is I would love to kind of help just with the future direction of ODK, because I just think it has so much potential to just kind of be louder and bring all these circles together. And I'm hoping to just kind of give back to the organization that I feel like has already kind of given so much to me already and want to contribute on that path kind of going forward. Thank you. Sean. Well, it was mentioned already about the impact, I think, COVID and how it's really played, I think, a monumental role on so many different types of organizations. And 
student involvement. You know, I have the same kind of philosophy when I was a student a few years ago. I had no interest in getting involved on campus. Even the free food couldn't really bring me in. Uh, but it was after COVID, seeing the, I think, really disconnect among different students really kind of brought me in. And that's really what got me more involved in ODK. And with enough coffee, I think, um, you know, it makes any of it possible today in terms of staying busy and staying involved. And I know I talked about it a little bit already, but I think having the perspective, not only with local leadership, um, which I've been fortunate to have through my circle, but also serving on the National Student Advisory Board, it's really been able to give me a perspective into what I think are on the minds of a lot of students today. And I think really it's threefold being able to support things like peer-to-peer -peer advocacy relating to uh, major challenges like mental health, uh, being able to build upon career support opportunities uh, through enhancing the ODK network and the mentorship programs that are already out there, and really, again, bringing that cohesion piece together uh, through tools like My ODK, in which leaders are able to really um, focus on, you know, what is important to them. And if I were fortunate to serve, I recognize uh, that you are my boss. And I think leadership is all about meeting people where they are and meeting constituents where they are. And I think uh, it's these opportunities to have types of town halls to get informed perspectives about what we should be doing as an organization uh, to move us forward, which is so important. And those are a lot of ideas uh, I'd love to champion. Thank you all. Okay, our next question, we're going to shift a little bit here. Can you describe what you see as the challenges facing Omicron Delta Kappa at the national level and at the circle level? So we'll start with Mitch, Brooke, Sean, and Alicia. So Mitch, you're up first. Thank you. Challenges. Uh, there are many. Uh, first and foremost is the fact that this is a national organization. Like any other national organization, getting folks together uh, is a matter of location. It's a matter of cost. It's a matter of time. Um, knowing that there are circles in all of the states um, to get to one facility, one venue that can host everyone, the thinking, the, the initial thinking, at least that I had, would be some type of stadium or some type of massive conference center to get everyone to be able to afford to do that. Would individuals have to fundraise? Would they self-fund? Um, would there be some type of scholarship opportunity to get folks together? So that's that's on the national level. On the local level, um, and I think some of the candidates actually mentioned, I heard differences in terms of size and structure of, of the ODK at the actual schools. Uh, at LIU Post, the, 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 the position was actually a, a smaller group with uh, a little bit of a less local flair and, and leadership. So uh, had I still been attending there, uh, chasing after my master's, I certainly would have begun my impact at the local level. Um, having said that, I am keeping relations with LIU Post, and as I said before, with several of the other um, people who are inducted with me in 2023. I think that uh, the concept of a town hall and, and this type of virtual forum in the modern era is a good thing. But as I had said during my uh, pre-screening interview, I, I definitely think there is justification for a live in-person setting somewhere, whether that is something like um, down at the Orlando Convention Center or in Las Vegas at some of these other massive conference halls at some of the hotels. I, I think there is room to try it because you don't know unless you try so if you try and fail, at least you can say you tried. Thank you. Uh, Brooke. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of a tough question because I feel like ODK is doing a lot of great things. I just think they can be a lot louder. And I think there's some things that they're doing, but it just needs to be louder, faster. And I feel like they need to speak to the needs of our students by like leveraging social media, leveraging things that makes them more invested. I guess with my talking about now, I guess the circle level at my college, I feel like just making students know, I guess what ODK is leveraging, I guess the value propositions that it gives and how it can help people, I guess, just kind of network, have those opportunities, that support system, and even just like using all the alumni as resources too, like getting football players involved and using Peyton Manning, I guess, as an example, or just like other alumni or people who are like, well, I guess, politics majors or want to be lower or 
I guess want to go into that field using like the president's example alumni I feel like that will just get people so much more excited with this but I also just feel like just it just needs to be louder I talking this when I went to the national leadership conference I wasn't upset I was just kind of surprised that there wasn't more anyone from my college there because my college was only like two hours away we had a pretty big chapter and circle and I reached out to some friends and a lot of them just didn't know about it and they all were, probably would have loved to came and I think that's a huge thing they're missing out on. And I'm not sure if that's at the national level, the circle level, or just in general, but that's such a good opportunity for students to go meet people in person, kind of network and stuff like that. And also at the national level, I think it'd be great to just kind of create a bridge with all the circles and try, I think we're, I think we're at 39 college states right now, but if there was a way to get a, chat, a circle in all the states, I feel like that'd be so huge and just kind of I know that they're doing that a little bit with the national circle, but there's just, I feel like so much potential, especially with the alumni and taking advantage of people who were in it. And I know those people would want to give back, especially to help students, because there's so many alumni, I guess, in this, and there's definitely a lot of potential. So, yeah. Thank you. Sean. Yeah, I know it's been talked about. I think one of the big things to sum up in a word is disconnect. Uh, I was fortunate last year to serve as the student body president at the University of South Florida on their St. Petersburg campus. And you see it everywhere. I think a number of students, when you have platforms like Zoom, which is great, which make conversations like these possible, I think then it, it really has that incentive then of, of almost decentivizing really any type of in-person activities. And of course, with a national organization, I think there are incredible opportunities for in-person types of events, not only the National Leadership Conference, which is great, but also more regional-based types of events, which can bring people together, whether that be in service projects, whether that be in types of continual learning opportunities. I think all of those types of things um, are really important. And I think really at a local level, it goes back to meeting people where they are. I think that when you have events that really are able to relate to what's on the mindsets of students today, I think that's able to draw students in, especially if you have food, uh, that helps. But even without the food, I think you can get a few students there. Again, in ideas like um, mental health, peer-to-peer -peer support, career counseling, those are really the types of things that I at least have heard from students when they talk about challenges that they're facing and things they would like to see more of. And I think engaging our alumni is incredible. I mean, it's amazing to know that we've got over 350,000 alumni members of ODK, really lifetime members, which is incredible. And I think being able to engage them in a program like a mentorship activity, if we are able to further enhance what already exists in that area, uh, that would be incredible as a way to not only engage current students, but engage alumni and able to tell them, well, hey, if you're a current student, this is an alumni who has something in common with you and has been very successful in their field. And I think it's that kind of step that outside the box thinking when approaching it in a few different strategic areas can get a lot of uh, members and a lot of students involved over time. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so I was going to also mention regional conferences. I think that that would be a really good way for people to kind of connect a little bit closer to home um, and share ideas that are working on their campuses, because a lot of times the demographics or at least the, the areas of interest within a certain region are going to be fairly similar. Um, additionally, you know, we kind of ran this recently, like we host an ODK leadership panel um, once a year. Um, we actually have some alumni that I'm connected with and I know like on campus or off campus. Um, and so we we did get, you know, two, but it would be really amazing to have just a better network, not just of who has been in our circle. And I know my ODK is going to try to address some of this, but also people who have moved into our areas uh, who are, would be willing to, you know, do speaker um, events where they can kind of talk about their experience in ODK and how it impacted them and promote the idea on campus. Um, with social media, I you know, one thing I've noticed is there isn't a lot of consistency in social media. So I'm a public policy major and one of the, and I'm also in the accelerated MPA program. Um, and one of the things we've talked a lot about is, you know, there's kind of these three steps to social media policy that roll out in organizations. And so when I was going, we were trying to make some branded 
infographics and flyers. And one of the things I would love to see is just more materials from ODK National to kind of create more consistency and messaging. Um, we love to share all of your posts. Like I have my social media person do it all the time. Um, but I also think that that's a really good way to kind of just increase awareness is of the national, what, what the national you know, organization is doing and ensuring that all the circles are kind of are sharing those things amongst them. So, you know, whether that be kind of um, specific emails that say, you know, please share this with your circle um, or drives of social media. I just think that that would be really great. Um, and then additionally, we really loved hosting the Stone Ethical Leadership Challenge last semester. Um, and I would love to see more programming like that, where it's kind of a curated program that a circle can just, you know, pick it up and go. And they don't really need to do a lot of the legwork or the, you know, the planning and, finding speakers and all those things where, you know, we can kind of, now that we had Tim do it last year, we feel very confident that we can do it going forward. And we plan to do that as an annual event. So I think that, you know, programming regional conferences and even just regional directories so that we know who the presidents of other local circles are or their faculty advisors, which may be more consistent um, that, you know, so we know who to reach um, because my amazing vice president did the research and she found all the people, but it was a little bit labor intensive on her end. And that would have been really nice to just have a list of all those people in Maryland. Thank you all so much. Okay, last question for the evening from, from me. <laughs> um, so what experiences have you had that prepare you to work effectively with the board of trustees? So we'll go Brooke, Sean, Alicia, and Mitch. So Brooke, kick us off. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like with me, I've had such a diverse experience. That's why I feel like this would be uh, huge for me. And I feel like I'd have to, I'd have a lot to offer, not just with my experience, but also with the unique mindset that I bring. I do feel like that's just my biggest asset in general. But um, in college, I was able to be the president of our club lacrosse team for about a year or two. I was the president of our entrepreneurship association for students and grew that to over like 50 members. And I also got to work with Furman's board of directors and got to meet with a lot of them throughout the year and still meet with them often for lunch and just kind of got to see what it was like to be a board member and kind of have those meetings. But um, in college, I also had a startup that I was working on and I had my own board of directors for that, which was super cool being able to have those meetings with people a lot older than me and um, have ex that experience as well as I had like student representatives for that as well. But um, I actually moved when I graduated college from South Carolina to San Francisco, California and ended up working for Adobe for the last year. And um, actually just last week, I won Adobe's um, innovator, first innovator of the quarter award and their MVP from last year. So I guess that experience, it's not being on a board, but it's allowed me to, I guess, give a lot of enablements to, I guess, the whole company kind of have that strategic vision and really be the one who's pushing boundaries, but also there's a lot of risk management involved too. So that's something I've been aware of. And I also got to join Adobe's um, generative AI board. And that's kind of a team where they picked like the top three from each departments throughout the company of Adobe. And I'm just kind of on that board showing how I use AI in my day and how our company should use AI kind of going forward and basically teaching everyone best practices and kind of recommending to the C-suite how people, I guess, at my level of the company, people who are VPs, how we're using it and how we should be using it for the future. And then also I'm a student ambassador for Adobe, which is really fun. Next In two weeks, I get to go to Dallas and get to go to some of the colleges and like help students like with their interviews and role plays and stuff like that, which I think is just super great because I just love leadership. And that's just something that makes me so passionate working with students. So yeah, I guess those are kind of the main ones. I also, what else? I have a um, city circles group of like 2000 women that I kind of manage and have been working on that with like event planning. And obviously there's a lot of responsibility and organization and decisions I have to make within that. And that's kind of been a huge thing for me as well. But yeah, hoping to get more experience, I guess, in leadership and working with uh, nonprofit organizations in the future, especially once I get my MBA from Clemson. Great, thank you. Sean. 
Well, throughout my life, I've been incredibly fortunate while I've been here in the Tampa Bay region to become heavily involved with a number of boards. I've been appointed by the city council to the Clearwater Charter Review Committee, as well as the uh, St. Petersburg Clearwater International Airport's uh, noise abatement task force. That's a hard one to say three times fast. Um, but in those roles at a community level, it's really allowed me to understand uh, the importance of diversity in a board and, and really more than anything, uh, the importance of compromise and being able to get things done, uh, especially in, in these two boards. I found that you have a very unique background from many different members uh, that really have different perspectives when approaching decision making, which is great. I mean, that's that's a great thing. However, then compromise sometimes can be harder to achieve than you'd think. And so I think being able to come into any situation with an ability to uh, respect uh, one another and, and really um, hear different voices and helping to set that strategic vision for the future uh, is very important. And at a university level, uh, while in my role as the student body president, and then this year, I've been very fortunate to serve as the student representative to the uh, USF Alumni Association Board of Directors. That's allowed me to see it more uh, from a university and, and academia perspective. And I think in that role, you know, more on the community side, there's, I think, a lot more um, disagreements in terms of how the policy and, and strategy should be set versus at a university academia level. There's more cohesion, I think, in terms of the common goals when you have things like a strategic plan, when you have things uh, in terms of uh, operational goals. Uh, I was just fortunate to serve on the Alumni Association's uh, Strategic Planning Committee. So with the MBA, it all comes uh, you know, into relevance. And so in all seriousness, though, I, I will say, I think that those experiences have been successful for me um, because of relationship building and because of that ability um, to hear different perspectives. And that's the same type of approach I would bring to the board. Um, and my other thought would be is the student trustee you're there to represent student voices. So I think when decisions are being made, uh, it's all about informed decision-making and ensuring that um, what you're talking about, what you're advocating for uh, are, are the beliefs and, and what's in the best interest of the student members. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so I have pretty much been involved in a lot of um, volunteer work and committees um, since a, for, for a very long time. I was raised Quaker, um, and I'm actually still involved with the Stony Run um, Friends Meeting House. But Quakers, pretty much everything that we do is done through consensus and committees. Um, so starting at the age of 14, I was on the Young Friends um, you know, executive board doing event planning and working amongst a group of teenagers trying to all come to a common ground, which is very difficult. Um, and then since then, um, as I said previously, I serve as the lower school division chair um, on my, my daughter's parents association, um, which has been a really amazing experience. I've actually done this year, I had a two year um, service that was just really fulfilling and I have had so much fun. Like we did stuff for the eclipse and we're planning our fifth grade promotion ceremonies. Um, it's just a really joyous experience to work with other parents. Um, at the Sony Run Meeting House, I am on the hospitality committee, which I, so at one month every year, I cook food for 40 to 100 people. It kind of varies. Um, and we are kind of like the welcoming force to the to the meeting house um, to ensure that everyone who comes in feels welcome. Um, but that is also a committee. So we have to, you know, kind of come together and make decisions as a group. Um, and then at, at school, I am the president of ODK and I serve on the SGA, which I love doing as an advocate um, for students. So I work in two front facing uh, positions on campus and I speak to students every single day. Um, they come to me with all kinds of, you know, issues from the very little to the very big. Um, and because I'm on the SGA, I feel very confident in taking those back to the SGA and asking for resolutions to be formed or speaking to administrators um, and kind of escalating it up the up the chain. So like right now we're working on an LGBTQIA resource center. We're working on non-binary bathrooms. We're working on credits for parking that can come through financial aid to kind of address the cost of th that for students who are kind of struggling with the cost to come on campus. 
Um, there's a lot more, but I won't, I won't go down the whole list. Um, and then I've worked in community development um, for, for a nonprofit in the west side of Baltimore. Um, I did that for almost two years. Uh, doing that, I also did the Billie Holiday Music and Arts Festival, which is a very, very large festival that pretty much I planned with a committee, but a lot of it was me because that was just my position. Um, but I really loved it. I loved getting to know lo local politicians, networking, going to Department of Planning meetings. I'm very active in my city. I think that it's just very important to be civic minded and to be engaged. Um, and then in my own community, um, we're actually having next weekend, um, we planned the Howard Park cleanup because we have we live um, near woods that people like to dump stuff in. So once a year, we plan a very big cleanup was with Trash Free Maryland. Um, and that's through the Howard Park Civic Association. So I, you know, I know how to effectively work with people because I I've worked at a diverse like uh, type of organizations um, where you just have a very different demographic of people because students are not the same as parents or not the same as being at a meeting house and um, or even working with people in the city. And I just I really have loved every single experience I've ever had. I, I feel like I'm a service oriented person. I just love to talk to people and I love to listen to their issues and I like to find solutions because I am very problem solving oriented. So thank you. And finally, Mitch. Last but certainly not least, um, I think that uh, everybody here has presented an outstanding case and uh, no leader has all the solutions or all the answers. We surround ourselves, the best leaders surround themselves with subject matter experts, especially in the things that they are not best at. I have spent a, a lifetime uh, in the world of McDonald's franchising. Our family uh, has over 700 employees and we're doing over $40 million a year in annual revenue. So from a, from a standpoint of managing people, managing resources and making sure that things are efficient, right? Because at the end of the day, profit is the bottom line. Um, I, I believe that I am unmatched and that I started my own 401c3, uh, excuse me, excuse me, nonprofit uh, East Lysa Youth Track Team that uh, seven years ago, we had 85 kids. We now average 150 kids in the spring and 150 kids, different kids in the fall. We're annually giving out four or $500 scholarships to the alumni after they graduate from eighth grade. So by the time they're in high school, they have an opportunity with, um, with an essay and some community service to go ahead and get $500 towards their college. I'm the first parent ever to sit on the board of the New York Performing Arts Academy in Manhattan, where we help uh, young, young people get into the world of modeling, acting, uh, and singing. And, we, and unlike some of the other facilities, we are uh, partnering them with professionals in the field. So people who are still actively performing and acting and modeling and singing and dancing, uh, we're pairing them up and I'm the first parent to be able to, to get on that board. <clears throat> My wife sits on the board of directors for Ronald McDonald House Charities here on Long Island. Uh, great cause. And um, because of that, I'm intimately involved. And of course, I'm at every single uh, fundraiser that we do. Um, we've got one coming up in just a week where we're at uh, Luigi's and it's a, it's a wind down fundraiser. And we're hoping to raise another uh, high five figure, if not low six figure day. So that's the kind of impact we're having at the local level. Here at Toro uh, Law School, um, I am now the treasurer of the Federal Bar Association, uh, prestigious position and um, well fought for in a, in a pretty gritty election. And I'm also about to become the first ever second year law student to run the VITA tax clinic for low and no cost tax services, uh, partner with Bethpage Federal Credit Union and National Recognized Bank. <clears throat> I think all these different things together give me a perspective that uh, maybe unmatched, um, and, and certainly I'll be able to bring, uh, that diversity or that collaboration that was referenced by some of my peers here and, uh, a way of approaching problems with a, with a slightly different mindset of someone who has, uh, t has been there and, and kind of done it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all so much. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Tim because we have a couple questions that have come in. Hi, everybody. Um, actually, Hannah per 
Hannah posted the first question. So we're going to uh, go ahead with that one. Um, and the order we're going to do this in is Sean, Alicia, Mitch, and Brooke. All right. So that first question was, how do you plan to interact directly with local circles in your elected role? Sean? Well, I think uh, in-touch leadership is so incredibly important, as we've talked about tonight, and, and being a true advocate for our student members, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to serve in this role. And I think that that starts with having the ability to make time in the schedule to uh, visit local circles, hopefully maybe through the use of technology wherever possible or, or, or where possible when you can take time out to travel uh, to visit with different circles. I know Hannah and, and her team was very kind to recently give me the chance in the last few months to uh, visit with their circle virtually uh, to hear about all the great things they're doing. And I think that making the time for those things um, is very important, not only to understand uh, the diversity and the uniqueness in each of our circles, but also in ensuring that we're highlighting the successes of our circles and how they are working uh, to engage folks. As we've talked a lot about tonight, I think engagement awareness can be challenging. Uh, and when we tap into our local circles and the work that they're doing, that's a great way to find solutions. I agree with Sean. I think it's really important to network, um, especially in your local areas, because I know, you know, especially with costs the way that they are, that it would probably be pretty cost prohibitive to be flying all over the country um, and to hold, you know, Zooms just to kind of hear student concerns. And, you know, actually one of the things that my circle did last semester and we it kind of didn't come to fruition, but we had actually, you know, compiled all the names of all the people in our local circles and we're reaching out to them. We had really great email exchanges with them and we actually got to meet a bunch of them at the ODK um, National Leadership Conference, which is amazing because, you know, we walked in and we were like, oh, wait, we know you because we've already been exchanging emails for months. Um, so this you know, that to us was really important that we were at least like reaching out. So they knew that we were there and we, you know, you all aren't the only circle in the area and we would love to partner with you. Um, and I hope that going forward, we just had a really busy semester. Cause as I said, we've had a bunch of events that kind of exceeded our expectations this year. Um, so I'm hoping that going forward, we can kind of circle back to that. Um, I will, you know, be relinquishing my role as president of my circle this semester. Um, so I, and I know that my circle is in amazing hands um, and that that will be, you know, something that's on their list of to-dos. Um, and I just, I really think it's important that we are hearing and advocating. As I said, I work two front facing positions at my university. I am almost always able to be contacted, whether by email or phone or text. And I am the type of person, I'm very type A, who responds to emails, phone calls and texts almost immediately. Um, I don't like to let things pile up because I feel like then that's when things get forgotten. So I think it's also not, it's not just important to be, you know, receptive to hearing what people are saying, but also to be responsive. I welcome the opportunity to continue going back to the campus and interacting with the students, interacting with the faculty. Uh, as I said before, non-traditional students. So I believe that I impacted the LIU Post campus as well as the ODK, ODK circle in a way that, uh, dare I almost say, unprecedented. Um, I, I have done speeches there. I have done uh, mentoring with some of my fellow students. And I look forward to continuing that process um, in this post or otherwise, I think that um, the impact that we can have uh, both at, well, as individuals as well as as part of the, the greater organization um, doesn't stop here. It continues on and it continues forward and um, growing the concept or growing the, uh, the local connection between the different circles, I think, is, is a critical way to move forward. I guess for me with figuring out how I, how I plan to interact directly, I guess with the local circles, I guess for me, I don't have a set plan because I feel like every circle is different. Like obviously my Clemson one's gonna be different than the Furman one or the Citadel one in South Carolina or the one at University of South Carolina. And I feel like to make that plan, I could probably come up with 50 different ideas to help do that. But first I feel like we need to figure out what's the bigger goal that we want to solve and what steps can we do to get to that goal. So I guess the first step would be to strengthen our memberships and the education 
at one circle and figure out how can we bring them together, whether that's through like a LinkedIn alumni group, a group me, or maybe an app or some sort of mentorship program or something or like alumni pop in something that we could do. But I guess I think that question is going to be different for every different circle's needs and specific things, because I'm sure everyone on this call has a different circle and they're not all doing the same things. And I guess it's figuring out what is that goal and how we can help them, I guess, whether that's create a stronger presence, get more opportunities for their students, or just kind of have a global, I guess, impact th through leadership, both on campus and off. So that's kind of how I would address it. So I have the next question from one of our attendees from Courtney Hathaway, and she says that she is also a, a parent and a non-traditional student who is finding success in higher education. What would your vision be for ODK supporting non-traditional students' involvement in leadership development? And the order this time is going to be Alicia, Mitch, Brooke, and then Sean. So Alicia, Mitch, Brooke, and then Sean for responding. So as a non-traditional student, um, one of the things I've been doing, um, I actually went on Sunday to a chancellor talk um, for students who are parents. And I know that not all non-traditional students are our parents. I, I will put that out there. Um, but I think it's really important that that diversity of thought is making it up the chains of the university systems. So like not just in ODK, but you know, we are we need to speak up about the fact that there are many of us. And I think that often we are kind of an overlooked group of people on campuses. Um, so I so one of the things that we think is, is really important in our circle is that we are producing programming that is family friendly. So, you know, bring your spouse, bring your kid, bring your friends. We want you to have all like ha have them experience ODK like we are experiencing ODK. That is just it's so important. It's vital. Um I the amount of people I hear from because I also do the Dennett Honor Society. I, I'm, I'm the uh, student assistant. So I have tons of students come to me going, "Why can't I bring my kid to this? I can't afford a babysitter. I can't you know, X, Y, and Z because of all of these time commitments and constraints that are just apparent in the life of a non-traditional student. And I think it's really, really important that especially as the country as a whole kind of changes. And I think a lot of people went back to school during COVID. I think it made a lot of people rethink kind of their track um, and really I mean, I know it did for me. <laughs> and I talked to a lot of people who have told me the same thing um, that every organization kind of needs to rethink how they're doing programming and realize that not all college students are going to fall into the 18 to 24 category. Um, and that, you know, going to a conference might be difficult. So hybrid options might be available. Or if, you know, you're doing connect connections to ensure that where you're having it is at a local park or, you know, a, something along those lines so that everyone can feel like they are included. And actually then you're also kind of creating the next generation of ODK members, because I know my daughter already calls herself, um, you know, an ODK member. And I'm like, I don't think that that's how that works. Um, she also thinks she's a student at, at the University of Baltimore, but, you know, I digress. Um, she, so I think it's like, you know, you're giving them that love and that ambition to really succeed in the future. And that's how you you build an organization is not with the people who are already in it, not with the people who have already come, but with the people who are going to come in the future. That's a hard one to follow. That was a great answer, Alicia. I'm uh, I'm impressed. Um, I think that, like, like Alicia said, recognizing that non-traditional students come in many shapes, sizes, and, and unique needs, right? We are often, uh, whether we're going full-time day like I did, surrounded by all 18 to 24-year-olds or attending night school or attending some type of flex situation, maybe on Saturdays or Sundays or whatever combination that might be at the different schools, realizing that there is unique needs and, and maybe different stressors that exist for, for one or another. Um, in the area of childcare, you... Uh, for my restaurants, I was able to help get um, connections with tutor time and kinder care, get discounted rates for the members, uh, for our employees rather, who uh, needed access to lower cost child care. And we worked out even things where we gave out food to the um, to the to the uh, child care facilities to help facilitate that relationship. I think that um, 
non-traditional students, it, it may have been a while since they've picked up a, a pencil, a number two pencil and filled out a Scantron or uh, a true story of my very own first day back at school. I was in um, a statistics course and I walk in with a legal pad and a pen and a pencil and every single student around me opened up one of these fancy laptops. I looked around my left, my right, and everybody had a, a, a one of those TI uh, graphing calculators. Well, the professor did the presentation. She went ahead and, and said, halfway through, there's 20 minutes left. Here, let's try to do your own problem. Seven minutes later, using only pen, paper, and, um, well, I was, and that was it. I put my paper down, my, my pen down, and I sat there and I waited. Eventually, she said, time's up. How many people are not done? Easily 20 plus students. So she said, okay, we'll spend the next 10 minutes of the first 10 minutes of the next class reviewing how to resolve this issue. I went up to her at the end and I apologized. I said, professor, when I went to school using any type of electronic device was, was, was cheating. Uh, so this is something very foreign to me, but for, can, I, can you confirm if this is the right answer? And I turned the, the document around, I showed her. She said, this is absolutely right. Why? I didn't see you with one of the TI-90 uh, whatever gra uh, graphing calculators or a laptop. I said, no, this is how I learned how to do it. And she said, you don't belong in this class. I'm going to give you full credit. If you don't want to attend here anymore, I will write a letter and we'll get you the credits. You still have to pay for the, for the course, but um, we'll recognize what you have already accomplished. And the, the point being that sometimes looking at things from a, a different point of view or uh, maybe an out of date, if you will, way of thinking sometimes still gets us to the right answer. Yeah, and I guess for me, this is probably one of my favorite questions so far, but I guess the really simple answer to this one is to give them hope. You want to relate to them, I guess, find someone in ODK who resembles a non-traditional student. That non-traditional student can mean a lot of different things. And find that story and be able to inspire them, motivate them, I guess, show them that people can do what maybe they think they can't for whatever reason or whatever they're going through. I guess like my famous quote is like, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And obviously that's kind of how I felt all my life. But I was lucky enough to, I guess, if opportunity doesn't knock, build the door. And for me, I was lucky enough and to, um, to build my own door and kind of make my own way. But I guess being an ODK, I want to be able to help those people who can't make that door and help build that door for them so they can find that opportunity and kind of live up to their potential that they have. They just haven't, I guess, I guess, living up to their potential and their gifts because one day someone told them that they couldn't do something or they had some barrier that stopped them from just, I guess, going and succeeding and going to the moon and just kind of lost that ambition. So that's really, I guess how I would handle that situation with non-traditional students, giving them something to look up to, inspire, and motivate. You know, as I approach my MBA graduation, it's been very different from my undergrad experience. In undergrad, as it was mentioned, you usually have very similar age range and you have a you know similar background. But with a master's degree, you find folks from many different backgrounds, those like me, maybe that came straight from an undergrad, those who are mid-career, those looking to get into the business realm for the first time. And you see that with so many things. But I find every time I speak with one of those students, they are empowered by their peers and they are empowered to be involved, to stay engaged, to know that they matter, to know that they have a voice and they have a say in shaping the future of, of you know their life and ODK in this instance and knowing that uh, that they really have value. And so I think that's really where the benefit of peer-to-peer -peer support comes through, being able to find those non-traditional students that are very involved in their circle, that are very engaged, being able to connect them as mentors uh, with those students maybe that don't know how to get involved, to give them advice, to show them how they can get involved. I think when you find those opportunities, you make it relatable and, and you make it so that everybody understands, again, uh, that that you are valued and, and you're heard. Um, I think that that will really help to enhance further engagement. And I think it goes beyond uh, just traditional opportunities you can be taking, but in things like skill building and things as it was mentioned in time management, all skills that we can continue to engage in is I think we're all uh, lifelong learners to some extent. Thank you, everyone. I apologize, we're not gonna get to all the questions because I wanna honor our time together. 
Um, but in a final wrap up, I'd like to give each candidate one minute, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our voting delegates. And we'll go Mitch, Brooke, Sean, and Alicia. So Mitch, kick us off. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jennifer. And folks, I'll keep this quick. I think I went a little over time a moment ago. Um, less than a year ago, I got initiated to this wonderful group. And, I, and I'm so thankful that I now find myself in this room with these amazingly qualified candidates, well-spoken and gives me a lot of hope for the future of this country, uh, if not just the future of this organization. Thank you very much for the consideration. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. It's just kind of crazy, I guess, to be here too, just looking at where I was three years ago. I was just like, that student, I guess, I feel like I'm proving a lot of people wrong. And I feel like I really have a story to tell the world just on my leadership journey. And I really want to use that story to motivate others because there's so many students out there that have felt how I felt all my life. And I really think leadership is the key to bringing out that those gifts and students, because not every student is academically gift, gifted or athletically gifted or even artistic, but having those five pillars, I feel like there's just so many different gifts and so many different students. And I really just would love to be a part of like helping shape society's future and also helping find ways that other alumni like myself, if I don't get this position, can be more involved. Because I know there's a lot of people who would be more involved if the opportunity was there, but I think it's a little limited right now and how I can give back and what I can do if I wanted to go right now in Texas to schools to just kind of be involved and help students. What are the opportunities there? And that's kind of the question I asked you guys today and how can we solve that? There have been uh, some really great ideas and discussion tonight and I'm really excited one way or another by the future of ODK and all of the things at store. I think though what's important to recognize is the ability to transform ideas into tangible reality, especially as we're in the context of this organization. And thanks to your support, I've been very fortunate to serve you already as a member of the Student Advisory Board, get to meet a lot of you in person through events like our National Leadership Conference, and I think have a really good understanding of what things are like at a circle level based on my own experience. And I think we have a great opportunity to capitalize on being able to bring more people together, further enhance our leadership skills. And although the challenges we're facing today are incredibly significant, I think ODK can play a critical role in aligning members' interests with opportunities to make an impact. And I think when we do that, uh, we're all deemed for success. So it'd be an honor to serve. And I thank you very much for your consideration. Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, sorry, um, I, didn't, I didn't get to go. Oh, I'm sorry, Alicia. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so I just, I, I took a very different path to get to college. Um, and we have a saying um, among Quakers that is way opens. Um, and I really feel like my way has opened. Um, what it means is that kind of life will put you in the path of the, the place that you need to be. And the, when I got accepted to the University of Baltimore, I literally broke down in tears. When I got accepted into ODK, I was just I could I, my heart was pounding and I I couldn't believe that I had this opportunity to to be part of such an amazing organization. Um, so for me, I just really feel strongly that I want to give back to this community. Um, I want to be an advocate. I want to be a representative of the students. Um, and I also know that one of the critical roles is being on the, the board of trustees is also overseeing the organization and making sure that they are doing their due diligence um, and fulfilling their goals and obligations and their mission, um, you know, as outlined um, to all of us when we join. So I, I want to be a part of that process. Um, I want to implement great programming. I want to, you know, make sure that the national conference is just the best it can be because I just had the most amazing time last year. So I thank you all for your time. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, everyone. Um, and a big thank you to Brooke, Alicia, Mitch, and Sean um, for, you know, putting your name out there, for participating in this process. And uh, Alicia, you said your cat was here. My cat's coming too. Um, it, and, and participating in this. I know that sometimes putting your name out there can be a little bit scary. And I appreciate your willingness to step up and kind of raise your hand and be part of, of this um, process. Um, just an FYI, um, 
the online election is going, the ballot I think is opening tomorrow. So folks be on the lookout for uh, the ballot that's coming. Um, a delegate has been selected by each circle and they will be allowed to vote and should have received instructions already, I think, or it'll be coming out tomorrow. Um, the election results will be announced on April 24th. And so thank you all for attending and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much.